Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Capital. We propose you today about 25-30 minutes uh, for an educational approach of system engineering modeling using Capital. Please be kind with us about the very, very basic case we chose, but it allows us to easily illustrate the different steps of Capital modeling. And as we are very model guys, at the cutting edge of the technology, we decided to model an autodesk bell. So here we are in Capella, where we have already created our Hotel Des Belles project. What you see here is the overview. It's a pleasant and very useful guide to help you in using Capella in right order. The overview allows to access the various steps of modeling. The operational analysis, in which we express the needs through the definition of factors and their operational activities. The system analysis to describe what the system does to meet the needs, the logical architecture which will describe how the system works and that regardless of any physical implementation, then the physical architecture which describes how the system is physically composed. In this video, we will ignore the EPBS and product breakdown structure, but you need to know that the EPBS describes whole system components as a product with make by reuse policy, configuration management, part number, and so on. Let's start uh, the operational analysis by creating our first uh, diagram. Uh, OAB diagram, Operational Architecture Blank. In this uh, first diagram, uh, we will create the entities involved, starting uh, simply by the hotel. In this uh, hotel, two players uh, that uh, we will uh, call uh, actors are involved, uh, the hostess, and uh, the customer. We now need to express what these actors do uh, and uh, we can uh, do that with uh, operational activities. The hostess therefore welcomes uh, the customer and for the customer activity uh, we have actually several possibilities. For instance, the hostess could guess, sense, or detect by herself the presence of the customer. And we discussed here with the innkeeper. And okay, we have commonly adopted the principle that the customer should actively, voluntarily call the hostess to indicate its presence. And now, how the customer will call the hostess? Once again, we discussed with the innkeeper and we have commonly decided that the interaction between the customer and the hostess will be a sound. So we create first a signal interaction. And then uh, the communication mean that we will call a sound. And we can actually stop here our operational analysis. There is no need to go deeper. We have a customer, a hostess. The customer wants the hostess through a sound signal. And the hostess can then welcome the customer. So that is the context of use of our future system. And please note that at no time, never, we have considered the notion of system which is nevertheless the subject of our study. Uh, the operational analysis, remember, only expresses uh, who are the stakeholders, what they do, and how they exchange. In this section, this main point is to define entities, define actors, prepare operational activity and exchanges. And overall, don't speak about the system. So now we can move on to the system analysis, whose objective is to describe what the system does to satisfy the operational needs. 
Let's first realize a transition from operational analysis to system analysis. This transition will allow us to automatically create one system function per operational activity and one system actor per operational actor or entity. Then we can create our first diagram, a system architecture diagram SAB. The notion of systems appear for the first time since we have started the modeling. As it is a bell, let's rename it a bell. We will also place on other side of the system the two actors, the hostess and the customer, which have been transitioned from the previous level. By choosing a locating function, yeah. We also be able to view the function which have been transitioned automatically and automatically allocated to the correct actor. We move box to have a better understandings and we get our transition view. And so the whole purpose of our modeling from now will be to go through the system, the signal interaction you see here, which is until now between the customer and the hostess. For this, we will create a number of functions to describe what the system does. From an external point of view, remind, we are in system analysis, so black box point of view. As it is a bell, we simply start by a function ring. Okay. And so it is from ring function that the signal, the sound, will start toward the hostess. So we move it by a drag and drop. No, our bell rings, it's fine, but it does not sound all alone. We have to activate this ring, let's say with a function, a new function, start the ring. Then we create a first functional exchange between the start the ring function and the ring function, and we call it ringing start. Then a second one to indicate that it is the customer that will trigger the ring. We take the opportunity to rename call the hostess in activate the bell. And we call the functional exchange, same, let's be trivial but effective, say activation order. Well, the bell is now activated, it sounds, but it does not ring indefinitely. It's fine. To make it stop, we propose to add a function, let's say, stop ringing after a defined duration. This function should start at the same time as the start the ring function. So we create a first identical functional exchange ringing start. And the second, which we call end of ring, from stop ringing to ringing. A little bit of grooming to improve reality. 
Now we have a model, not very large, rather simple, but really focused with this black box ID on the external interface with a set of first level function corresponding to what the system does. In addition is this diagram, which is a static diagram, we propose to add a dynamic view. For this, we create an ES diagram, ES for exchange scenario. In this diagram, we place the bell at the center and our actor, customer at left and hostess on the right. Then we add functional exchange already created with the previous diagram. This is the great advantage of the integrated model. Between the customer and the system, we already found our activation order. And between the system and the hostess, we retry our sound signal. Then we put our functions already allocated to the actors and the system with this button allocated function. For the customer, activate the bell. And for the hostess, welcome the customer. Then what the system does, firstly start the ring. Then ring, and then stop ringing that we placed just after the exchange signal. And between this function, we add the corresponding functional exchange. Start the ring to ring and ring to stop ringing. So let's review a little bit our dynamic diagram. The customer starts the process through the activation order, the bell activates, then it rings, the sound signal is emitted toward the hostess, who can now welcome the customer before or after the bell has finished ringing, depending of the defined time. During system analysis, we create system functions, exchanges, functional chain or scenario, stay focused on the functions which are related to the interface that helps you to keep in mind this black box ID. Let's go back uh, to the workflow and uh, let's go down into the logical architecture level. Uh, here, in the same way as for the system analysis, we're going to perform a transition first of the functions. And then of the actors. We can now check that the transition has uh, gone uh, smoothly. First, uh, on the logical uh, functions, okay, it's uh, the case. And uh, second, on the structure with the hostess and customer actors that are okay as well. Perfect. Now we can uh, create our diagram. Uh, for the diagram, we are going to uh, create a LAB, so a la logical architecture blank diagram. In this diagram, uh, we get back uh, our system. And we call it a bell. Then we get back our actors that have been transitioned uh, from the previous level. We also get back uh, the functions that have been automatically associated uh, to each uh, actor.
and we allocate the remaining functions to the system. And here we come uh, with a diagram with the same content as uh, the system analysis, but uh, except that it has been transitioned here. It is now that begins uh, the actual work of uh, logical architecture. We need now to go inside the, the system and uh, with a, a white box approach uh, by opposition to the black box approach that we had in the, in the system analysis. We also need to keep in mind that we need to remain independent uh, from any physical implementation. So we can detail, refine, precise, or complete the functions. And also, we're going to search for logical components that will match uh, with these functions. So let's begin the refining functions, starting with the, well, activate the bell function. Uh, for now, according to our model, the customer uh, sends this activation order and uh, uh, it is directly going to, to actually start the ring. If we want to go into the box inside the system, we realize that an activation order cannot uh, occur directly. So without anticipating on the, on the physical layer, we feel that this activation order uh, needs to be collected by the system before we can do anything uh, with it. And in this case, uh, to start the ring. So we create a function and that we are going to call uh, collect the activation order. Of course, uh, so the functional exchange called activation order now needs to reach this new collect activation order function. And one, one last thing, eh, which is to, to send a, a functional exchange from collect uh, to start and that we are going to call uh, activation. Okay, good. Now, do we have any other functions that we could refine? Uh, ring, uh, well, no, it seems uh, clear enough. Uh, stop the ring after a defined duration. Okay, so here we can do something more precise. We have a defined duration, which means that we have to manage it, so at least to measure the time. We propose to split this function in two, stop the ringing on one side, and also measure ringing duration. And there are still the, the functional exchanges uh, to organize. So first, the ringing start uh, function exchange now goes to measure. And then we need another functional exchange from measure to stop that we are going to call end of duration. A little bit of grooming to improve the readability. Great. Functionally speaking, our system seems correctly described at least enough to start uh, creating the components. Now, system components are major elements of architecture because they describe how the system is structured and because they carry and embed the functions. So now, if we, if we look at the, the functions we have prepared, let's ask ourselves, what does our bell contain? Let's start with the easiest. Our system is a bell and we have a ring function. Remember, we are at level logical architecture, so let's not infringe on physical architecture and let's stay very generic. So no buzzer, no buggle, no music. Let's say that we have a sound emitter. We create directly on the diagram a logical component that we are going to call sound emitter. And then we just need to allocate the ring function to this new sound emitter component just by drag and drop like that. Easy. Now, uh, do we need any other components in our system? 
trans that, uh, let's have a look at the interfaces. Uh, on the hostess side, we have the sound emitter component here. And on the customer side, uh, we have no components. Uh, although we re received the activation order. So let's create a component to receive this order that we're going to call activation collector. Again, here we repeat, uh, the name is intentionally generic because we don't want to infringe on uh, physical aspects. So as uh, before, so we allocate the function directly to the component by drag and drop. And there are also the remaining functions. At first glance, we see that it can uh, all be allocated to a single component. So let's create a component for that we're going to call ringing manager. Okay, here we admit and, and confess that uh, all architectures contain such kind of uh, manage uh, components that manage something or process something. It's okay as long as the architecture does not contain only such uh, manage components. So please do not abuse. Here we are. We have done the logical architecture for our, our bell with a functional breakdown level with uh, refined functions, well identified functional exchanges in between functions and components, the collector, the emitter, the manager that carry the functions. Of course, we could go deeper, but, but let's take it step by step. In logical architecture, abstraction is the main point. Stay independent of the physical solutions so you can get an as much as possible invariable architecture. Okay, let's do now the physical architecture. As for the previous levels, we realized transition, first for the logical functions, then for the external actors, and then for the three logical components. In the physical architecture level, we build a PAB, PAB for physical architecture blank diagram, and in the physical architecture, our aim is to show how the system is built of what it is composed of. In this PAB diagram, we are able to create the implementation component called node PC here, and to create also the deployed component, the well name deployed PC. We put the transition actors, customers, and the hostess and we create a node PC, a Bell node PC. And inside this Bell PC, we get back to the transition component in the behavior. We find them here and we allocate them using the manage behavior PC. Okay, don't be afraid by force of habit, you will find them easily. Now our actors and components are placed. We only have to put the last transition element, that is the function. And please note that they have been automatically allocated. Look, we click on the customer allocated function and we just have to click and add the function repeat operation for the hostess. And the same thing for all the component. Allocated function and the bringing manager allocated function. After order a little bit, we easily obtain without any addition what has been transitioned. Now let's have a look to the elements. The customer triggers 
the ringing with the functional exchange activation order. Okay, I'll leave that. The activation collectors get the activation order, a ringing manager, a sound emitter. Okay, okay, but these are near, uh, not very physical names. Uh, let us remind that they come from the logical architecture. So physically, um, how do we want our systems? Hmm. Uh, our sound emitter, we imagine it more uh, something like a dome. And a dome ensures the ringing function. Hmm. So it's good. For the activation collector, we imagine something like a push button. This is more physical function, physical component. And for the physical function, we are tempted to change the name of the physical function. Um, it's more transmitter pressure, transmitter push, than collect the activation order. Yeah, okay, let's do transmit a pressure. Okay, to what uh, thing, to what component a pressure is transmitted? Hmm, to something which will activate the ringing. That means something will ring the dome. So something like a hammer or a clapper, let's say clapper. Clapper, okay. And to press the button, hit the clapper, and the hammer hits the dome, so the function activate the ringing can be renamed to hit the dome. So we still have two functions we didn't check yet our measure ringing duration and stop the ringing. Hmm, the clapper really do this. Does this? No, no, we are not sure. So we need to allocate differently. And for this, we need to move this function on another component, and it is the DOM, because in our physical choices, and I repeat, this is really our choices, this is the DOM who ensure these two functions measure ringing and stop the ringing. Alone, the dome, depending on its shape, on its material, will manage the duration of the sun at so its end. OK, we order a little bit and let us check together. OK, the customer activates the bell by pressing the post button, which transmits it to the clapper. The clapper hits the dome and the dome rings and stops after a while. Perfect, perfect. Uh, nearly perfect. Because our three components are alone and we think there is something missing, something on what they can rest on. So, okay, it's not too late to add another node PC. A base or better pedestal pedestal and we move all our component on this pedestal. Okay, now we think it is really done. Our physical architecture is complete. With physical architecture, you define your hardware and software component and physical interfaces. Think, well-define your hand criteria and allow constraints.